Hello everyone and welcome back to Nene Nekoma. And welcome to what was supposed to be the last part of the first alternative ending to In My Shadow. However, um, things got a little astray as in I might have added two to three more parts. I'm sorry, but my channel members said that they weren't mad at me, so <laughs> I hope the rest of you isn't either. <laughs> Enjoy! Aaron hardly found sleep after the second incident that night. He knew how essential it was that they all got rest, but after everything he saw Atsuma been through, in just one night, his brain failed to follow his body's need for rest. Well, he was glad to see the blonde finally relax after the medication kicked in. It was almost eerie to see him so still. Kiyomi and Shinsuke were too worn out, leaving him to stay awake and worry as he checked on Atsuma's breathing over and over again. I didn't quite believe it yet. After six months, that he was truly alive. They had been wrong. Atsuma was alive. He had lived through hell, fought, and somehow emerged victorious, but heavily wounded in the process. At around 6 a.m., he got up. Watching him rendered almost lifeless by the medication once more in his artificial sleep was too much for him to bear and he was of little help staying in bed. Worst case, he would stop the others from resting. He was glad he did, because only a few minutes later a knock echoed from their door. He approached it cautiously, suspicious who'd visit them this early unprompted. One glance outside and he felt stupid not to have considered it. Before him stood Mia-san, Atsumu's mother. Her face was tear-stained, though she had obviously put in an effort to appear as composed as possible. She seemed to hold her breath, unable to speak immediately as he quickly stepped aside to let her in. I'm sorry. I know it's early. I couldn't... I needed to... Aaron shook his head. Of course he understood. At least to a degree. He couldn't imagine what it must feel like to a parent to assume their child dead and then find out they were alive six months later. It's okay. Come in. I'll make us tea. Can I see him first? He nodded and guided her down the hallway. He's still asleep. As are the others. It's... It's been a lot. He whispered the words and she nodded. He didn't know how she managed the strength not to rush over to her son to confirm he was okay when she saw him from the door to their bedroom. She let out a small cry and immediately clasped a hand over her mouth. There was yearning and pain in her eyes, but she shut the door again quickly, a task Aaron would have deemed impossible in her position, and followed him to the kitchen. She caught the ace by surprise again when she hugged him. Thank you for taking care of him. Thank you for saving my son. He felt his own throat grow tight and hesitantly reciprocated the hug. It felt nice. He knew Mia son to be a great mother to the twins despite their hardships, but in her embrace resonated the love of a mother warmer than he could have imagined. He saved himself. Atsumi, he... He is stronger than any of us. He, we should have searched him harder. We should have... He felt all the guilt well up inside him again. The horror he hardly managed to confront when he thought him dead, now much worse because all he could think of is that he could have helped him. But Mia-san shook her head determinedly and soothingly wrapped up his back. You can't think like that. It'll destroy you. It wasn't your fault. You saved him. I know it. I know my son and he... He fights strongest when he has someone else to fight for or to return to. You gave him that. You are taking care of him now. He needs you. And you are there for him. Thank you for that. Aaron was momentarily speechless. He took a deep yet shaky breath as he slowly stepped back. 
Mia-san's eyes were full of the familiar determination he knew from Atsumu. Thank you. We will do our best. I promise. Her expression softened and she offered him a slight smile. I know you will. They settled in the kitchen, offering silent comfort to each other as the water for the tea began to boil. Unspoken pain and horrors hung between them, making the air too heavy to fill their lungs with and fuel their voices to speak them. What would he even say? The pain they lived through was so visceral. He wouldn't have known how to describe it if he had tried to imagine it and found himself equally incapable now, despite having lived through it. He felt helpless. Part of him wanted to run. The weight of the reality they were forced to face felt like it was crushing him. The air as if he had attempted to breathe thick smoke instead of air. But the very love he felt for Atsumu, making him so vulnerable to the recent events, kept him tightly chained to the blonde. Like a gravitational pull, he found himself incapable of leaving. It was hard, fighting the constant urge to stay right by his side to confirm it wasn't a dream. The conflicting demands taking root deep within him seemed to grow under the first rays of dawn, threatening to break him apart. was a dangerous sensation. Hadn't he been the steadiness the others came to rely on? If he broke now, when a path of healing had been set out for them, before they could take the first step, what consequences would he condemn them to? Aaron? Hmm. He looked up suddenly. His eyes had been focused on the wooden patterns of the table, unseeing. It was as if his brain had been momentarily severed from his body, and he quickly pulled his hands away from the hot cup as it threatened to burn him. My apologies. What did you say? She gave him a knowing smile, coined by tiredness and grief. It held a compassion only those few were capable of who had lived through and seen the same chasms that manifested in the loss of Mia Atsuma. I prayed so many times when I had to realize that he was gone, that he would come back, no matter how hopeless. Her gaze too became unfocused, seeing not their furniture and walls, but a memory that although recent appeared eons away. And now he did. My wonderful, stubborn Atsumu refused to give up on us and returned. It is not the divine cure I imagined, and yet it feels like the greatest gift. I want to be strong for him. I, I don't even know what he has lived through, how he must feel. A sob interrupted her and she carelessly wiped at her face. But his loss cut too deep. She nodded. Whatever he needs, I will provide it. I will never, never let him be taken again, but I can't help my tears from falling. He needs his home to return to, but his loss changed us. That's okay, even though it doesn't feel like it. He looked up surprised. The guilt was still gnawing at him, which he smiled through her tears and reached for his hand. It's okay. Cry, shout, and if he permits it, hug him as tightly as you can. Show your grief. Show him that we have not, never wanted to give up on him. That we wish for nothing more than to have him back. That he is wanted. It will take time, but it will mend him. It is this, your honest devotion to my son, that will be the balm on his wounds. Aaron found himself incapable of speaking as his hands began to tremble. He was freed from any obligations to apply, not just by her understanding, 
but another frantic knock on the door. He took the lead and found, much less surprised this time, that Osmo also could not wait any longer. I, I jumped. Please, tell me it wasn't. I didn't. He's gone, isn't he? he? Confused, Aaron attempted to make sense of Osmo's words that never quite formed a coherent sentence. He looked panicked, wide eyed, and in deep conflict. Komori appeared behind him, followed by Suna. I told you it wasn't a dream. He's back. He's alive. Asma cringed as if struck in the face. The moment it clicked for Aaron that the younger twin struggled to accept his prayers to have been answered in fear of it being a delusion, Mia Sin had already taken her son by his hand. She led him down the same path Aaron had showed her and scarcely managed to stop him from rushing over to his twin. Asamu didn't have the same miraculous control as she did in face of the circumstances. He clung to her in a desperate need for comfort, and Aaron swiftly offered them a seat on the couch where she placed his head in her lap as if he was a child again and soothed him gently. The hours ticked by like this, until eventually, with Kida's arrival in the living room, Osmo found himself compelled to start on the breakfast he had promised. It turned out a little excessive, but the process itself seemed soothing to him, and soon his boyfriends had joined the silver-haired, as did Aaron, if only to keep his hands busy and to keep away from the couch where Kida had sat down next to mia -san. He knew what they must be discussing, the circumstances under which he was found, the medication he required, the police report, the kidnapping. Hinata and Bokuta had helped to fill some gaps in the story, but it was still a big mystery to them. All they had seen were the results, from fake suicide notes, to the absolute horrific revelation of the new effects darkness had on the setter. Aaron couldn't endure hearing of any of it again, and worse, see the reactions Atsuma would attempt to hide and fail as the pain became overwhelming. The kitchen was safer. He briefly wondered if it was fair to put this burden on Kida when the other gave him a brief, reassuring smile. He was still contemplating on its meaning when the bedroom door opened anew, freezing anyone in their house for a solid 10 seconds before they resumed their task more tense than before as the sound of the shower echoed in the sudden silence. Mom? Atsumusia in surprise at his mother, frozen until the tears slowly caught up and before he could say anything more, the gentle hands of Mia-san wiped them from his cheeks. Hey, sweetie. The blonde tried to say something, presumably apologies, but only choked sobs left his mouth and he pressed himself tightly to her side as she pulled him into his arms. Just like with Osamu, her soothing movements never faltered as silent tears claimed her cheeks. She didn't require any explanation and refused any attempt of an apology to be voiced, as she continued to whisper soothing promises into her son's hair. Everything is okay. You're safe. No one will ever take you away from us again. I... I... am so... Shh, none of that. You have nothing to apologize for, and a lifetime by our side to realize that. That is the greatest presence you gave us by returning. He sobbed harder, his face still buried against her neck. She held him until he calmed dried his tears and carefully brushed the still damp strands of hair from his face before leading him to the table where Osamu presented him with the food. They all joined to eat, silence replaced by carefully light conversation sprinkling in events Atsumu ought to know of the past months. For a moment, it was almost easy, normal. As the sun lit up the room and Atsuma's tension eased a little, a collective breath of relief seemed to pass through them, and filling the silence became easier with every second. Finally, they could focus on healing rather than surviving.
thank you so so much for watching to the end i really hope you enjoyed it this means a lot to me so if you liked it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and yeah tell me your favorite quote from this video under the pinned comment it would mean the world to me as i mentioned at the beginning uh this was supposed to be the happy end which you can probably see in the way that it did end however i got ideas for like expanding it a little bit further and i realized there was a significant part that was still unresolved so yeah we're gonna do that special thanks to my name neckers thank you so so much for supporting this channel they help me make sure that i can put out videos as frequently as i do thank you for emo croissant and elijah elisa i hope i'm pronouncing your names correctly um yeah if you're watching right now and not know Nikon yet check out the join button under this video if you want and here are my other social media and more content i hope you will enjoy it and i hope you have a wonderful and amazing day bye everyone wake up today's gonna be a good day wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up.